Well, it's uh, Monday, about 2 o'clock. I was sitting around the house about 10 o'clock, not doing anything, getting ready to unload all my stuff from the show, pack it back up and unpack it. You know what I mean? I get a telephone call. I get three telephone calls, actually. I got eight or so globals. I got uh, one of these fell on the floor. I got three pocket knives, three restaurant type knives, and a, I guess these are fishing knives for some guy. They look like fishing knives, you know. They got dishwasher stains on them. Global's in good shape. And then a lady calls me and says, I got some shuns I need to get sharpened. I got your name from Williams and Sonoma. Can you do my shuns? I said, sure. How many do you have? Two or three? She says, no, I have a whole block. And I said, okay. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen globals. I presume these are steak knives. Little microchips. I looked at some of them. The worst part I had noticed is start off with, I see that one right there. You see that big rust spot? It shuns, but they've been run through the dishwasher. Can you see them dishwasher marks right there from the soap? Every one of them is a chip underneath it. Let's see if I can get a picture here on my truck where you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Dishwasher coarse hard soap chip and that's just this one that's the first one we looked at I'm not going to go through them all this is a serrated one it's in pretty good shape just got some dishwasher stains on it mm, this one looks like Jaws look at that isn't that a shame look at all them little chips there No tip. The nature of the beast, it seems like. This was not too bad. It was starting to rain on me. I better get back inside. Here's a big long slicer. It's okay. The tip broke off it. Let's see what's in this baby. Oh, it's. Oh, God. <laughs> a nice cleaver. Hmm, glory. That's the only thing I see wrong with it, though. That monster chip out of it. Oh, we looked at that one already. Oh, no, we looked at that one. All right, I think I think we're done looking. Hmm. This is a pretty cool knife here. It's a it's a HK. I think it's, it's a bitch made copy that they they made for a while. Auto. I like it. And here we got a Emerson. Commander. And here we have a bench made auto. 5,000, 5,000, I think. Mel Pardu design. Yeah, 5,000. Pretty nice knife. These are just. Tramontina from Brazil. She's in terrible condition. These are Dexter Russell soft grips. Different different sizes. It's all the same knife. Dishwasher stains on it. Some pull through sharpener. Look like it's been used on it. 
Okay, I got to go to work now. Stand by. Well, I got all the little ones done. All the chips are gone. All the tips are repaired. Get ready to put them back in the block. Well, there's all the big boys and the serrated ones. Or serrated one, I should say. Alright, I gotta hit the road. Almost forgot the cleaver. Big fat cleaver. No dings. All the dings are gone. Well, Tim and I are headed across the big pond to check on a big knife gig. We're headed into the tunnel. Well, it's uh, not quite 3.30. We're back from the Air Force Base. We had a hell of a time getting in pass was supposed to be arranged this and that we had a two hour wait at the visitor center we finally got in about 1 30. we did uh six, 21 knives six to 16 in one spot five in another and then we have to get paid some kind of way by the government about 10 minutes Low Tide Tim is on his way over here again. We're going to get into Colorado. We're going to head to Elizabeth City, North Carolina. And there's only one reason we ever go to Elizabeth City. You remember our buddy, our detecting buddy, Joel, from Pennsylvania. He's at the OBX right now on a little holiday. He hunts with us at the Land of Nada sometimes. Uh, sometimes we meet him in Ocean City, Maryland in the summertime. He's a, he hunts in the dirt some and hunts the beach a lot. He's a tree, tree butcher. You know, he's a tree climber, a tree, has a tree service. How about that? Anyway, when he's in the uh, Outer Banks, he always goes well, I won't say always, but most of the time he goes with us and meets us at this spot where we're going. Place opens at 5. I doubt you remember what it is, but I'm not going to tell you that we'll get there. It's like glory. With a big G. Stand by. <laughs> I open these horses as long as I can live, sell them by pints and quarts. Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yes, sir. That's all we go for. That's one dozen gone. It's another dozen gone. <laughs> you find all kinds of other crap, but...
He was working on two. I'm on two. Joel's on two. bar finished up all the knives I had left over I'm in here with the critters watching TV there's an Indian and there's Big Ol' Jack Big Ol' Jack and Boo Boo you can't see him he's in his chair in there A nice kind of day, but I'm finally over it, and I don't have any knives for tomorrow. Finally, unless I get a call from somebody, what are you barking at? The rest of the knives, all the knives are in that thing right there. Done, D O N E, done. I don't even want to see a knife tomorrow. Do what, Jack? No, been too many knives, there's been no walking, no spinning. Look, you Indian. That's it. My buddy Joel is, uh, like I said, he's at the Outer Banks. He's going to Corolla tomorrow and hunt on the beach at Corolla. He'll give me a report. Uh, unless I got some reports in the last two hours from the local guys, I don't know that they found anything today if they went. went. But I'll go check it, and if it is, I'll shoot it on here. Stand by. <laughs>